Hello, welcome to this late morning taste challenge. There's some women next door talking about fruit trees and what they're growing. We have 100 pipers introduced in 1865 by Shivas Brothers for the United States market is bottled in Bardstown, Kentucky by heaven. I don't know what kind of agreement they've got, but apparently they got an agreement. But it is a Shivas Brothers brand. It's the number one selling Scotch whiskey in India. Let's see what it says. Number one blended Scotch whiskey in India. It's about the number 101st blended Scotch whiskey in America. Now it's probably higher than that top 40. Named after the Scottish tradition of bagpipers leading soldiers into battle at Battle of Culloden, Culloden, 1745, Bonnie Prince Charlie and all of that. Uh, created by Shivas Brothers Master Blender, Alan Bailey, 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 B-A-I-L-L-E, Bailey. In French, I guess it'd be Bailly, 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 Bailly. It is a sweet, complex, and rounded blend with a fruity nose and delicate honey flavor. I'm surprised they don't talk about the smoke because it's pretty smoky. It's made using some of the best malts in the space side region that have been matured and carefully selected superior quality cast. The range includes Hunter Piper's Deluxe and 12 year old. Well, I've never seen a 12 year old. In India, it's called Seagram's 100 Piper's Deluxe Blended Scotch. But, uh, an, oh, and some other brands they make is Passport Scotch, something special, Glen Campbell, Scapa, Secret Space Eye Collection, Abelure, Royal Salute, the Glen Livet, Valentine's and Chivas Regal. Okay, well, pretty famous brands in that lineup. Johnny Newley says, good morning, Ron. Yeah, I was just hanging out with John Newley on Style Sunday. I haven't had the John Barry, you mean the John Barr, but I did like the Hunter Piper's really cool guy brought me a bottle once. Yeah, he is a cool guy. He'll be the first to admit it. All right. Um, so on the back of the bo bottle, there's a, a whole essay about scotch. You know, like a tree. You don't have to read that. Uh, imported and bottled by Piper's Import Company, Bardstown, Kentucky. Uh, yeah, all right. Heaven Hill. So, uh, I don't know. Seagram's invented it because Seagram's used to own Shivas Brothers. They made, an, a, they made a deal with uh, Heaven Hill to bottle it in Kentucky. They get a cut of the action. You know how it works. They get a slice of the action. They sell it. And uh, it's $8.99 at a lot of stores around here, $9.99. It's really cheap. I think there's an age statement somewhere on here. I thought there was. I thought it said age three years, but um, I guess I was confused. Okay. Um, hmm. No age statement. Okay. Well, They're telling people across the street, we're friends with Barbara. We're picking the fruit. I think it's a three-year age. But I'll change the uh, um, notes. Just put no age statement for either. All right. So John Barr, no age statement. The company, uh, McKay, White and McKay, was founded in 1881. They're from Scotland. It's an old company. They introduced John Barr like around 1974, 75 for some reasons like, I don't know, it's some long story that for some weird reason they weren't selling uh, Johnny Walker Red and Black in England, which sounds like unbelievable, right? But that they, uh... all right, shut up. I got to yell at him. Shut up. I'm doing a review. They're picking fruit. Why do I got to talk so loud? Just pick the fruit. Pick it and eat it. If you don't like it, throw it away. All right, anyway, um, can't get away from noise. John Barr, um, no age statement. White and McKay. It's totally a Scottish package. It's not bottled in the United States. It's shipped over here in these squared off Johnny Walker style bottles. But apparently they couldn't get Johnny Walker black or red in uh, England for a few years. I don't know why. I know they had a lot of internal problems in England with unions and uh, economy. 
But uh, so they came out with this. Um, I don't know. It sounds like some kind of made up story to me. Like, why would you not be able to get Johnny Walker red label and black label in England for three years? Like, remember when you couldn't get Budweiser in America? It's like, no, no one remembers that because that never happened. All right. Except during Prohibition. OK, anyway, um, this will be Monday's challenge. This will be the other scotch. This will be the uh, the main guy, John Barr. John and Nilly is going to root for John Barr because they both have the name John. My grandfather's name was John. His son was John Jr. They call him John W. Woodrow, his, his middle name after Woodrow Wilson. All right. My grandfather was John Woodrow Sr., named after Woodrow Wilson. He was born in 1918, you know, the whole World War One thing. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, they're probably colored. I mean, you think it's going to get that dark after three years? Something's telling me no. You think this is going to get this dark after who knows how many years? Probably three minimum. No, I, I think it's actually older than three years because there's a red label. It's called John Barr. Um, I don't know what it's called. John Barr Deluxe or something. I think it's aged three years. And this is the uh, like trying to compete with uh, um, Johnny Walker Black, which I've never had, but I I'm keen to try it. They had, I noticed at the store yesterday, they had Johnny Walker Black. They had double black, um, of course, the green, the platinum, and so on. So I'm sure they're all fantastic. All right. Oh, now the other lady from next door came over. Now it's going to be a whole lot of talking. Okay. Normal price. Typically, this is about... Um, 23 bucks. Well, of course, I got it for cheap at Matherne's 15.65. Close out. The manager told me they never sold a single bottle. So you just want to get rid of it. I'm sure they only bought six, probably bought a case, six bottles. Never sold a single one, so they just got rid of it. Sold them at cost. No problem. I bought it. They still sell Hunter Pipers. And I've seen people go into that store and buy Hunter Pipers. I see it at Winn-Dixie. I see it at Walmart. I see it everywhere. Everybody sells Hunter Pipers. You know, the big plastic jug bottles, the um, 750, some places sell the one liter and not too many places. Um, the little half size and so on. Okay. Almost dropped it. Same color. Well, I don't have to worry about the shade. So they're both uh, amber, gold amber. Man, if I saw that 12-year age, uh, Hunter Pipers, I'd buy that. But I'll probably never see it. I think it's probably only sold in India. Chivas Brothers products are popular in America and Canada and England, but they're really popular in India, Thailand, Pakistan. Well, Pakistan on the black market, you know, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, I mean, um, Malaysia, Kampuchea, Vietnam, Taiwan, Republic of China, um, Philippines, Japan. So that's where they're really popular, Shiva's products. It's probably 90% of their market. Maybe East Africa also, like Tanzania. Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Madagascar, Mozambique, Swaziland. What is it called now? Swati. That's their way they call it, Swaziland, Lesotho, and all of that. So, I mean, it's really popular out there. I don't know why scotch is so popular out there, but it is. And then in India, there's a lot of mimic scotches. There's a lot of products that are made in India. In India, 
that are trying to mimic scotch, and I think they're probably really, un, really inferior from what I can understand. And there's a lot of brandy also that's inferior, but um, apparently it's really popular, um, like um, Royal Salute and uh, what's that brandy? Heart, heart not Hartley, Hard, not Harvey's. Uh, or something. But anyway, I, I would be reluctant to try that Indian stuff. And they like really strong beer too. In India, they're really into strong seven, eight percent alcohol beers. It's basically what they like. Budweiser Magnum, the black and gold label, which we cannot get. The Foster's Gold, which is eight percent, seven and a half, eight. The uh, Hayward's 5,000. Um, they just are big time into high, high, uh, um, alcohol beers and liquor, especially Scotch style liquor and brandy, you know, of course, brandy East Asia. They love Corvassier, Corvassier in East Asia, much more than America, but it's still popular in America. It's huge in South Korea, Okinawa, Taiwan, Republic of China. All right. I think this is going to be a tough one because the uh, Hunter Pipe is very smoky and the John Barr is very smoky. The Hunter Pipe is, performs far above its price point. Um, you figure $8.99, that's wretched trash, garbage, filth, scum of the earth, you know, like refuse. You would think that. You would be wrong. Uh, it's much better than it ought to be for eight ninety nine a bottle. John Barr it does perform above his price point. It's twenty three bucks a bottle everywhere, uh, but it's, it tastes like it should be thirty one dollars a bottle. So, smoke, grain, alcohol from corn, more than likely, mostly corn. A little dough from the single malt. Might have some wheat. I don't know. Can scotch have wheat? I've never read anything so they can't, cannot. Although I know they mainly deal with uh, corn whiskey and uh, the grain whiskey and um, single malt, barley malt, scotch. It smells nice. It's not profoundly smoky, though. It's there. Over here. Less smoke, more uh, honey, corn, candy corn, uh, grain. Almost a little like a, it's like a musty corn. Um, what do you call that? Like a corn. Like a roasted corn. I've seen them do this in Mexico, in northern Mexico, like in Matamoros or uh, Camargo or Reynosa, especially Reynosa and Matamoros. When I visited Mexico, they take a whole corn cob, but they don't pop it. They just grill it in a way that it doesn't pop. It just gets like, well, it gets like those things you can buy at the store. They call them corn nuts, corn nuts, and they're crunchy. It's kind of like that smell. Good afternoon, Ron. Well, good late morning here. It's still morning in the central time zone. So by virtue of the smoke here, I think it must be John Barr because I know that uh, 100 Pipers is smoky in the flavor, but not so much in the aroma. Not so much in the aroma. Now, remember, let's, let's put this in perspective. I paid $8.99 for the 100 Pipers and I paid $15.65 For the, oh, they're just talking on, on, they just talk. Shut up. For the John Barr. And um, so we're talking about um, a good 650 more per bottle. And I don't think, I don't believe it's 650 better. And actually the real price is 20, 20, about 21, $23 a bottle. And I don't think it's that, I don't think the John Barr is going to win just by virtue of the price. It might technically be better 
I hope Stout Sunday was a success. It was a great success. We were kidding around, you know, a lot of antics. You know, me and Robert, I was pretending to be angry and all that. That's like, I think most intelligent viewers can see that's all put on. It's not obviously not to be taken seriously. Although some people will make comments like, man, you were really upset. And I was like, really? You thought that? I was just kidding around. All right. Why were you upset? I wasn't. I was just kidding. It's all antics. Like I said, antics. It's just put on. I mean, it's all obvious. It's, it's funny because when I do all that, it's so obviously put on. You know, it's like no one could seriously watch that and think of, yeah, pretending to be upset. You know, it's, it's like with David and I, a lot of that is pretty obvious pantomime. You know, it's like pretend. They'll take us seriously. Like, why were you so angry? It's like, after we did the video, we ate lunch and talked about other stuff. And like, nobody was angry. It's just, it's like a, it's kidding around. It's not serious. Julie Gilpin. Hey, Julie. How, howdy, y'all. She says, howdy, y'all. Right. Got the whole, got Jules joining, got the whole gang joining. Um. Well, this is profoundly smoky. So I would say that if you like to drink scotch, but you might be reticent to try smoky products, this could really turn you off because it's extremely reminiscent of, and it, it does make you think about smoked pork. Like if somebody was barbecuing or had a smoker, really more like a smoker, and they just intensely smoked the pork, you would think that's what this is. But of course, it's not smoked pork. It is smoked whiskey. I'll never get it wrong. There's no way. I cannot get John Barr wrong. No way. It's too smoky. David gets mad when you don't pour him as much beer as you do for yourself. Well, yeah, he's not joking then, actually. But I just tell him, like, you need to drink that much. I mean, you're that concerned about drinking alcohol that you want it to be exactly, exactly six ounces per person. It's comical to me, you know, I just find it so comical. Of course, I don't want to get cheated either, but it's just his reaction. You've noticed that it's it's funny. I mean, it's the way you tell a joke. It's funny. Funny how? Like I'm a clown? Like I'm here to entertain you? Yeah, I like that. Like he's here to entertain me, like he's a clown. Hmm. This is really strange because when you put Hunter Pipers up against all the other blended whiskeys, it showcases the smoke so strongly. Like you say, Hunter Pipers is so smoky. I can't get over it. Yet, when you pair it against the John Barr, <laughs> it isn't smoky. It's like honey tasting, like honey in a cereal grain. Just think of a... a a popular children's cereal minus the sugar and the salt. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like, uh, I, I, I don't know, like honey bunches of oats, you know, the multigrain kind of thing. I know that some of them have almonds. I don't, I'm not talking about almonds here, but No, no, I'm not really picking up smoke here. I'm just picking up like cornflakes. Yeah, cornflakes makes sense. Did you finish the Crown Royal series? No, I haven't. No, I have Crown Royal, Fine Deluxe, the regular. I have the Bourbon Mash, Blender's Mash. You you could find it in two labels, same product. Bourbon Mash, Blender, Blender's Mash, same product. And I have the uh, uh, Crown Royal Black, the 90 proof. That's the strong Crown Royal Black. I have those three. Uh, Fine Deluxe, the original. The, the, the um, Bourbon Mash slash Blender's Mash. And the 
black. If anybody wants to do examinations, I'm open to do it. Uh, hi, says Rito. And Ronnie says, hi. All right. So hmm. it's funny how the uh, theory of relativity works here, because you, if you drank the the hundred pipers against a lot of other scotches, the hundred pipers taste and smell so smoky. All right. <clears throat> but here, it just tastes like cornflakes and some garden compost and maybe, maybe a scintilla of smoke, a scintilla, that's it. But over here, It's uh, well, the aroma is not too smoky, it's sort of pungent, but <sighs> but the flavor <sighs> I mean, I may as well go to a campfire, it's that unbelievably smoky. And it, you know, what's the smokiest blended whiskey on the market? I don't, I couldn't tell you, I'm sure there's some that's. There's probably some that would make this taste like it's got no smoke. But this thing is profound. And um, there's no mistake in it. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you feel about smoked pork or smoke in general or smoke specifically. But it's pretty smoky. So it's... You know, I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I really like it. And I'm so glad I bought John Barr. It's a real winner. I mean, it's a real winner. I mean, $23 a bottle. If you see it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Don't hesitate, buy it. But I paid $15.65, which is the greatest deal in the world. I've been thinking about picking up a bottle of Crown Royal Black. That's a good idea. That's a good thought. I was very pleased with the XO. I want to buy the XO, and I'm going to buy that next. That's the next one, John and Neil A., of Georgia Beer Reviews. XO was the Asian uh, um, sherry barrels, or is it port? One of those, right? Sherry or port, one of those uh, dessert wine barrels. But I got the black, unopened bottle. Yeah, baby. And I paid a lot. You know, it's not cheap, but oh well, no big deal, no big deal. And uh, I'm, it's 90 proof. And if you're not careful, it could be a real problem. But I'm curious to try it. What about the blue label? Blue label. What are you talking about? I'm thinking about picking up a, some smoked pork. Oh, yeah. Cognac barrels. Okay. Oh, cognac. Oh, cognac. Okay. Uh, French brandy. Jean-Pierre says, hey, Jay. Hey, Jean. I'm about to post our videos tomorrow. The ones we did in the backyard, you know, the recorded videos. Those came out nice. All right. Uh <coughs> Woo. All right. Get it together. Get it together. I got these beans and sausage to cook. Drinking Heineken. I miss Heineken Dark. I used to go to the French Quarter and get Heineken Dark. I don't know why. They, they just kept selling it in the French Quarter uh, in New Orleans and then across the street from the French Quarter. But then it just inexplicably, inexplicably disappeared one day. Pew. Then they brought it back. They did bring it back for about a year. No, not a year. Six months. Nobody bought it, you know, except for me. 12 packs, $14.99. Uh, Heineken Black, uh, Brown. Heine Heineken Dark. <laughs> but, I mean, you, you can't get these people to change. These Heineken drinkers, they're not going to drink the dark. They're going to say, it's nasty, it's strong. <laughs> Heineken Dark is A, not nasty. B, not strong. It's mild, mellow, bready, and wonderful. But, of course, Heineken is nice. I never heard of Heineken Dark, says Ronnie. Oh, it was great. Great. I bought it in the old bottle. You remember the squat bottles? Jean-Pierre probably remembers the squat bottles, and then they came with the long necks. Well, I mean, what's the purpose of making a product nobody buys? Long answer short, there is no purpose. Um... Okay, let's get down to this. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, what? 
It's so smoky, it's like a fire alarm. You know, don't drink this around a fire alarm, it'll go off. Um, strangely not smoky, but when I compare it to other scotches, it tastes so smoky. It's really weird, man. Well, this is obviously the John Barr. I, there's no way I'm going to get it wrong. No way. No way. I'm not going to get it wrong for the rest of the taste challenges. It cannot happen. It will not happen. So I'm going to go against, uh, what am I going to go against? Um, James Buchanan. Well, that could be tough. Now, that could be tough to Buchanan's. That's pretty smoky, but I don't think I'll get it wrong. The Buchanan's, uh, Deluxe, the uh, Johnny Walker Red. No, I won't get it wrong. Johnny Walker Blue. No, I won't get it wrong. The uh, Highland, Highland Mist. Better not get it wrong, Highland Mist. Piper Dean, better not get it wrong, Piper Dean. Uh, uh, Cuddy Sark, no, because that's all dough. Bread dough is no smoke. J&B, it's no smoke, but it's wonderful. Oh, I love that J&B. <sighs> and the um, Inverhouse, no. Inverhouse, well... You can drink it. It's a real company, too. Like, okay. But they make a lot of single malts. They don't really. Inverhouse Blended is kind of like their throwaway brand. They make actual single malts that they are proud of. You know, Inverhouse, they're like, well, let's not talk about that. We'll talk about other things today. Like, and as a bush, if you go on their brewery tour, you're like, what about King Cobra malt liquor? Like, uh, we're not talking about that. And if you keep asking, they're like, get him off the tour. Get him out. Get him out. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm not really kidding. Kidding. Ronnie S. says, Flame of Fire. R Rito says, Blue Label Johnny Walker Whiskey. Yeah, Blue Label. I've got it. It's going to go against this. I mean, it won't be a contest, but Julie says, oh! Smiley, surprise faced. And then uh, Ronnie S. says, Something, something, something. Looks like a clamshell or a broccoli. Oh, or is that smoke? I don't know what that is. The Starship Reliant and Wrath of Khan. Uh, 100 reasons to not drink, drink it again. Whiskey Scout. Well, I, I'm, it actually doesn't perform that well against John Barr. Um, the John Barr is profound smoke. It's like a campfire. Um, smoke pork. I said that. Smoke pork. Like uh, like um, pork butt or something. It's bizarre. And then the uh, Hunter Pipers is just like um, yeah. Hey guys, let's take a box of cereal. Let's distill it. Bottle it for a minimum amount of, of time. Sell it for eight ninety nine a bottle. It's like really cornflakes. It's um, it's great value. Honey bunches of oats is what it is. It's um, whew. Piper Dean. Yeah, well, Piper Dean's, um, yeah, it's kind of like this, very basic, but it's $6.49 a bottle. So then you're not losing anything because you hadn't paid anything. No, John Barr is much better. It is. I'll admit that. Hi, John Whiskey. Barr's not Barnes. Hey, Julie. Well, they're all talking to each other. All right, so this is the obvious John Barr. So it's going to say JB when I show the label. Yep, there you go. blurry. Let's see. The camera's got to focus. JB. JB. You can probably see that. JB. And the Hunter Pipers is the other scotch. OS other scotch. Um, I mean, it's all right. I see a lot of people buying it. A lot of people buy it. A lot of people buy it. Why? Because they want the rich, smoky character? Uh, no, because it's $8.99 a bottle, and they want minimal scotch characteristics, and they mix it with... Uh, Delaware Punch and watch NFL or reruns of 
Um, what's the crossword puzzle game show? Um, you know what I'm talking about with the She used to be real good looking like 35 years ago when she was like 27. Um, <laughs> anyway, that, they watch that. Or they watch um, Tom and Jerry reruns. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so I see it super cheap. Yeah, I see it too, Ron. See what? What do you see? Oh, yeah, the uh, label. Yeah, that's how I do the blind taste test. Wheel of Fortune, right, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, what's her name, Vanna White? I remember, man, I remember years ago they were interviewing her on TV. They're like, how old are you? I'm 27. I was like, 27. Now? Hey, well, you know, time marches on. Time marches on. Maybe Jeopardy, too. No, not Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune. I'm talking. All right, so, um, yeah, I put these little labels Just tape them to the bottom of the glass and then I mix them up, mix, 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 start talking. I can't remember one from the other. And then I do a taste challenge. I would say most of the time I get them right. Now, John Ailey watches these, I think, kind of carefully. Um, probably about 85% of the time I get it correct. But there's a 15% percentage, and that's a pretty big percentage where I get it wrong. I mean, I get it wrong. And, uh, I can't explain it sometimes and I feel bad, but I, I, I feel good ultimately because you're doing honest taste challenges. You're not cheating. You're trying to be fair. And if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. And if you're not willing to go on the internet live and do the challenge, then get off the internet or at least don't start coming on to my channel with an alias name talking about what I'm doing wrong. It's like, well, where are you? Where are your taste challenges? Oh, I can't do that. I have an important government job. Yeah, right. So anyway, um, if you want to save yourself a lot of time and trouble, do, do not watch the last taste challenges because um, I'm talking about the next two weeks because it's going to be John Barr against everybody else. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to get it mixed up one single time. Now, is it going to be better every time? No, I mean, I think the J Johnny Walker blue label is going to be better. I don't know about the red. I doubt the red will be better. Um, Uh, uh, James Buchanan might be better. Might be better. Um, uh, Cuddy Sark. I mean, that's going to be a personal preference issue because Cuddy Sark is more bread dough, and this is more char uh, smoked pork. So it's kind of like you can't say one's better than the other. It's just a personal preference. But I think it, it, I think I I won't get it wrong. No, that's my prediction. You could hold me hold that hold me to that. So if you come back in a month and say, well, you said, I'll say, no, I did. I did say it. So, no, I do not think I'll get it wrong. And I'm, I'm very confident, very confident. So uh, once we get through this, we'll do single malts to Glenn Moray versus the uh, Tomatin. Then we'll be off to uh, Brandy, which won't last too long. And then we'll do gold rum, age and gold rum, which will last a long time. Then we'll do uh, uh, rye, which will last a little bit. But I have some great rye whiskeys. They're, they're so good. And then I have uh, uh, bourbon. And the next bourbon I'm going to do is probably, well, honestly, I need to do the ancient age, six, uh, 10 star, the six-year age, because I've been neglecting that, and that's not right. Ancient age, six uh, six year age, 10 star. I need to do that. I bought that in Meridian, Mississippi. It was 13, oh, 13.99. I can wait on the Henry, Henry McKenna. I can wait on the Henry McKenna. So we'll do the, uh, uh, yeah, ancient age, uh, 10 star, six year age. Then the uh, blended whiskey. I've got Old Thompson which is actually a historic brand. Didn't say it was a good brand. Say it was, I said it was historic. Some history is bad. And then that'll take forever. 
unfortunately. Then, uh, oh wait, oh, <laughs> forgot about the rye. I can't do the bourbon until I do the rye. Oh Lord, oh, how could I overlook that? I have the old overhaul rye. Old overhaul rye, not the 100 proof, but I can get it. The old overhaul rye, yes, yes. Against all the rye whiskers I have, the Jack Daniels rye, the uh, um, Dickel rye, uh, the, uh, all the other ones. So yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, let's see, comments. She's still cute. Yeah, well, she was really cute, like in 1986, 87. <laughs> She's a looker. Yeah. Vanna White, yep, says Julie. Go Lions, says Jack. Go Saints. Go Lions. Don't come on this channel talking about go Lions. I shouldn't say that because I shouldn't say that because the Detroit Lions did win the NFL championship as recently as 1957. <gasps> but, uh, Rania says, lying, lion face. Julie says, time marches on is a great song. Whiskey Scout says, I may be able to do the Glen Mori versus Tomatin. Oh, wow. That would be a great taste challenge, a duo taste challenge. Oh, I'll, I'll be down for that instead of me being all lonely by myself doing a duo. duo. Ron, do you like mixed cocktails? No, I, I don't drink cocktails. But there's a show in New Orleans that's famous. It comes on every week on the radio. It's called The Tales of the Cocktail. Famous show. More famous than this. Because New Orleans is a major cocktail city. Well, hell. Excuse my language. <laughs> Sazerac cocktail was invented in New Orleans by the uh, Peshaw people and on the other, the other apothecary people. Uh, my favorite cocktail that has whiskey in it. Uh, I don't have a favorite. Maybe a, um, I don't know, old fashioned, but I, I don't know. Go Niners go, says beer for breakfast, facts for snacks. Okay. Lots of presidents love rye whiskey, says Jean-Pierre. Apparently that's true. I read that. Yeah. Weren't all, weren't we all cuter in the eighties, says Julie. Yeah. When we were young, but now we're not young. And then one day we'll be old, and that will just be too bad for us. <sighs> Gin and tonic or tequila sunrise? Uh, I, interestingly, I've never tried tequila in my life. People say, you're lying. You lie. Why do you lie? I said, why? Well, never tried tequila. I'm sure it tastes like agave nectar. I've tried those agave nectar beers. You know, I get it. I got too much whiskey, brandy, and rum to try. I don't have time for tequila. Uh, let's see. Uh, beers and tomato juice is good, says Rekeep. Oh, yeah, like the Budweiser, Clamato, Chilada. Yeah, those are good. Old-fashioned, says Ronnie. Yeah, my grandfather, who died at age 96, he almost made it to 97, didn't quite make it. He uh, always drank old-fashioned. And my mother drank old-fashions. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, they're okay. I mean, they're nice. It's kind of like a candy, like a thing, you know, like. That's right, Ricky. Micheladas are great. The spicier, the better. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Chiladas are great. Yeah, I don't have any chiladas, and I haven't had a bunch of tomato in a while. All right, oh, that's it. I got I to gotta go. I got to cook these potatoes. No, the beans and the sausage and the uh, red onions. And the uh, Rex Goliath uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. That's gonna. I'm gonna drink with it from Constellation Brands. And uh, the Saints are playing. Who cares? Unpatriotic bullcrap. Uh, anyway, uh, it's something to watch. All right. Beer for breakfast. Facts for snacks. Says, what do you think about? Oh, he says it like this. What do you think about whole garden wheat beer? My answer is, I think it's pretty good. I like it. But my friend David said it used to be stronger, but they lowered the ABV back around 1993. But I don't know exactly what year it was. I'm just saying it like that because you wrote it in all caps. Wow, 96, that's incredible. Yep, 
That's the year, 96. All right, well, thanks for everybody. So John Barr, the clear winner. You know, interesting product, keeps winning. Why would a cheap off-brand whiskey keep winning? Why would it keep winning? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like Ronnie. I'm like, what? <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say no more. And that's it.